Welcome, everybody. Tell me when you're ready to start, John. I think we're ready to go. We have everybody listening, so um, right. thank you for the invitation, and um, I'm going to hand over to you without further ado. All right. So what I'm going to do, folks, welcome, first of all. I'm going to, um, I'm using something that allows me to put the what I'm saying in the text down in your chat box, so if you cannot hear me well, you should be able to read it. And pretty much, I may, I may, you know, spontaneously say this or that, but most of it is in there to make it uh, easier for you guys to follow, okay? So let me know if you can't hear something or if something is un unclear. I don't mind being interrupted that way. All right, so can you all see down on the chat? So we're meeting at the Welcome Center, and we're not by the Welcome Board right now, but we will be in a little while. All right. In Second Life, I call myself Wisdom Seeker, and I chose this name because I'm someone who's always searching for wisdom and ways of improving people's lives that come from many different cultures. This place is called Inspiration Island, and Inspiration is a sudden, brilliant, creative, or timely idea and that's what we want to encourage in everybody who comes here. Our project here is called Whole Brain Health because according to the scientific research to have a healthy brain and greater well-being you need to pay attention to your whole person to your body mind and spirit and the world you live in. Well-being is a subject of a lot of research these days. The earlier you understand how you can protect the health of your body, mind, and spirit, and the more you practice what you understand, the higher quality of life you'll have now and as you grow older. I tell my grandchildren this all the time. So I want to give you a little bit of the history of how we got here. John asked me to speak a little bit about that. I've been in Second Life regularly since March of 2012. I came into a virtual world because I wanted more opportunity to help people learn how they can improve their own well-being than I could reach in my small American village where I live. Even though it's near New York City, it's still a very limited group of people I could reach. And here, there's a large global community. How else could I have met your professor, John, or, or you? When I started Whole Brain Health, it's called WBH here when I speak about it again, it was just me. But I soon discovered that when you have a good idea, people start encouraging you and joining you. Now we have over 40 volunteers in our collective. Everything you see around you was built by collective members. Use your camera and just kind of look around. They come from all over the United States from South Africa and Europe and the UK. And we keep adding new members from new countries. Some of our volunteers are retired, some are disabled, and some still have jobs but want a place where they can express themselves in meaningful ways. Everything we do here is designed to help visitors learn how to create a personal lifestyle that will keep them as healthy and happy as possible. We teach as experientially as possible through self-guided challenges and interpersonal programs rather than just passively receiving information. I'm giving you kind of an a, a overview here and then we'll go and look at some of the places and things I'm talking about. But I just wanted you to get a larger picture of what we're doing here. One of the reasons I think virtual worlds are important is that they require you to keep learning new technology while you're doing interesting, fun things. Novelty is very good for neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means the brain keeps growing with new experiences throughout your life. We used to think that 
uh, after a certain age, your brain did not develop anymore, but we're finding that is not true, that to the very end of your life, if you keep yourself active, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do that, you can be as alert as when you're younger. Maybe you're not as fast at thinking about things, but you can be as alert. This island that you are on right now is built like a skyscraper. We are limited to 512 meters on the ground, but we can build to up to over 4,000 meters in the air. Let's look at our welcome board to see what I mean. Let's go over to the welcome board here. I want to show you because we, one of our members created this. We have a, a former programmer. Will you follow me, please? Over here to the welcome board. Everybody made their way over? We have four full levels of bills plus several sky boxes. So we have to develop, we've had to develop different ways to help people explore everything we have. People get totally lost here. So we created this welcome board and what you can see here is that there are four levels and says more. So on each level you'll see a name and a kind of a picture of where the particular parcel is. We are right now on Inspiration Island Welcome Center, which I'm kind of standing in front of. And if somebody wants to, if you if you just want to click on something, don't go to it, but just click on it to see what happens. Each of these areas will give you a they will give you a teleport to go to that place and you can actually go there. But don't do that right now. <laughs> okay. And then if you go to the top to the second level, somebody want to click, I'll click on the second, the number second. And you see what happens? Now you're looking at the second level. And the same for the third level. And the fourth level. And the other places that are kind of hanging out in the air here. So we've got a lot of things here. I'll go back to the ground level. Okay. So, I don't know if you've even got to that. So, if you click on the number for each level, you can see a map of that level. Okay. So, this is just one way to move around the island. We're going to use it to explore a lot today, a bit today. But first, let's walk to the gazebo. It's right across the gra grass here. I want to start showing you places that we have. So, if you want to follow me, or did anybody see what a gazebo looks like? You know what a gazebo looks like? Follow me over here. And we can go inside. You want to come inside? So, we built this place for a reason. People come here to listen to music and chat and dance several times a week. So we make it a very friendly place. And you can see all these a dance ball in the ceiling. If you click on it, you'll see a menu of dances. And I ask you if you want to dance, which you could do if you want to. In Second Life, people love to dance. Sometimes they even do it at the computer while they watch their avatars dance here. Dancing is very good for the brain. So is walking, which is why we encourage visitors to walk around here. So why is Second Life a very good place to teach how to increase your well-being? Virtual worlds offer very special benefits beyond the big one I mentioned, which is meeting people from all around the world without leaving your home. Think about the dangers of loneliness during the pandemic. In the U.S., many people live alone. SL is open 24 hours a day. That's great. You're all dancing. Good. And you can always find someone to talk to, especially in the many music venues. 
Regular positive social interaction is very important for well-being. One collective member who plays piano here, see the piano? He plays piano here. He can't actually play the piano in real life, but he streams in piano music. And he's become very well loved for his musical taste and his kindness. He chats with people when they come and dance. And he chooses to look like a leopard in Second Life. So we have a leopard playing the piano here. I think sense of humor is very important for life too. And there are a lot of things in Second Life that make me smile. What attracted me first to Second Life was how imaginative it is. I think you guys must... Be, must see that as you're going around. In Second Life, you can try out different personas. Nobody knows how old you are or what you actually look like because you can decide how you want your avatar to look or behave. This is a safe place for experimenting. Some members of our collective have lost weight because they realized they could look like their avatar. That's pretty amazing, but it's true. You can exercise your mind when you learn new things here. And you can be creative even if you aren't in your life outside. Some of our members have discovered an interest in art or music or creative writing here because there are so many interest groups in Second Life. They want to learn how to create art too, even if it's just in Second Life. One of our members has done that here by building our music and art park on the fourth level. Being able to express yourself personally and doing th things that feel meaningful to you are also keys to weight greater well-being. I wish. <laughs> You're better looking than your avatar. <laughs> Yeah, and think about how you chose your avatar. And as you, if you stayed here, you probably would change your avatar. So let's walk back to the Welcome Center. I want to take you inside it for a minute or two. Oh, somebody came on a horse. How about that? Yeah. So follow me back inside the Welcome Center, okay? Join me over there. <laughs> Great dancing, guys. I don't know how to stop. <laughs> click the ball again, and then you can click stop. Uh, so, let's see if I if I got that far here. I went in my little thing. Okay, let's go inside. Oh, okay, the posters, the posters outside. I think you just walked by them. There were some posters right by the door are for special events we're co-sponsoring this week. Yeah, I don't think it's, uh, nothing's coming up when I click on this, so it must be a glitch or something. Yeah? I have to do it two or three times, I think. <laughs> uh, today is Earth Day. I hope you, you all know that, Earth Day. And so we've had events yes. that we're co-sponsoring those events. And then we're tomorrow through Sunday, we're having something called Cognicon. How you stop dancing? Um, you should be able to, oh, you know, you have to go to Avatar. Are you all on Firestorm? John, are, they, are you guys on Firestorm? Um, most of them are on uh, the Second Life you are on Firestorm. Okay, I want to get the Avatar Health because when you go to Avatar Health, you can just click on, uh, if you can find Avatar Health, stop right. Avatar Animations. Let's say, sidearm says top menu, click me, movement stop. Thanks. Thank you. So the posters outside for the uh, for this brain health conference we're having, and they're linked to websites to give events we're going to have here. All right. I think I went too fast here. So we're going inside the welcome center. I want to show you. This is another way we're trying to find our way around. Usually with uh, the animations, you, when you click on them, you get something that says stand, and then you click on stand and you're, you're off whatever the animation is. But you see here what we did, we tried to find other ways to help people make our way around all of these four levels. So this is all the stuff that's on the first level. And if you click on each one, you'll get a note card that tells you a little bit about it and gives you a landmark to go there. 
And then this across here, there are second and third levels and the more over here. So we're trying to find all these different ways to help people make their way around. It's a very, very big place. Again, like a skyscraper. So I have a note card with landmarks on it. I'm going to give to you guys. And if you want to come back here, you can use it to click on them and come back to the Welcome Center. Just going to hand it. Don't use it. Just take the note card right now. And we'll, and you have it. I think I got everybody in this little thingy. Okay, select. Okay, so just that's a that's a group of note card of uh, land, landmarks, including the first one, which is where we are now. So today I want to give you a sample of how people learn about well-being by doing things here. To see kind of how we try to, as a nonprofit, try to create, make a transfer between what people do here and what they can do in their lives outside of Second Life. So if you learn things here about yourself and about ways to keep yourself healthy, you can take them anywhere in your life, right? We're going to the second level of the island and you, I'm going to do is give you, if you have trouble doing it, I will give you the, uh, in, in chat here, I'll give you the landmark. You just, you can click on it or on the note card. Yeah, click on the landmark, double click on it or click on it and you should get, go right up to the next level. Okay, everybody click it and go up and I'll, I'll meet you there and we'll TP anybody who doesn't make <gasps> Get everybody up here. Everybody here, let's see. Lisa Miller, you want to, are, are you able to, I'll offer a teleport. I'm not sure which of these is your students, John, so maybe you should do it. So maybe people just visiting the island. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's a few people missing, so I'm going to send a few GPs as well. All right. I think I'll hear you better if I do that. Talk again, John, so I can make sure I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah no, now I can, yeah. If you want to go ahead, I will look Try to bring them up? Soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's great. Okay. All right. So close to each other, and this is the second level. Remember that this is like the second level of the, of the skyscraper. So we have here a bunch of different things that are sort of related. If you look here, there's an organic garden. You want to walk over with me and just take a look at it for a minute? If you want to walk inside of it and take a look, you can. There's a little organic garden. You can actually dig in there and you can uh, pick strawberries. The idea of this whole thing is to give you a sort of your avatar, a sort of sense of some things that are that actually add to a much better life. And there's a little gar there's a little uh, shopping area over on the left, like a like a. Uh, An outdoor farmer's market and a little house, you know, tiny house, you know, the whole tiny house movement, get a small house and you don't need a lot, a lot of things. For you folks, is this something that is very much uh, on people's minds where you live? 
You can type in chat if you want to. Just curious about for you, is this is Earth Day a big thing for you folks? It's becoming bigger. Um, we had a major announcement in our uh, by the government today about um, a new climate action bill that has been a long time in preparation. We have the Green the Green Party Minister as Minister for the Environment, so we made that we launched that plan today. So it's, uh, it is big, but it's, you know, like everything else, not among everybody. Uh, yeah, I see somebody said, not for me, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good to know. But the idea here is uh, I, I try to eat orga organic food because I'm very concerned about uh, pesticides on the food and that kind of thing. So I do try to do that, try to grow my own food, my own vegetables. I don't know if some of you like doing that kind of thing as well. So I want to show you, I'm just watching the time here. We have, we have about 15 more minutes. Yeah, we do indeed. Okay, then let's, I just wanted to show you that and I, and point out to you, we can follow me again. Try to stay close. Slowly. So we have this, in this area, we have that organic garden, green living. Across the way we have the, it's called Nutrition Resource Center, where we put lots of plant-based recipes because of the, the healthful nature of plant-based foods and the good it does for the environment as well. And we also have here the COVID Resource Center. We're going to go look at that in a moment and the Hall of Heroes. Anybody want to guess why they're together? Why we put these things together? You got That's chat, not hat. <laughs> Okay, so let's walk over here to the, I wanted to show you what we've been doing in the last year. So this is the COVID Resource Center. If you walk inside here. Wait till everybody gets in here because you won't be able to hear me. Our member who's a medical librarian keeps this updated with the best scientific information she can find. You see that the information is in various forms and languages. There's some in Spanish, there's in um, American Sign Language. And there's a survey over here. You might want to try the survey. We created the survey. We were curious about people's, I'll show you where it is, right here, I think, who is standing in front of it. Okay, right here, how likely are you to seek out and voluntarily receive the COVID-19 vaccine? We've been getting interesting information about that. So you can, you can um, click on it, you will get something to fill out and if you want to do that that would be kind of interesting for us to see what your what your reactions are to the vaccine the idea of getting it so we try to get people to interact with us inside the health hacienda there are quizzes you can take to find out how much you actually know about things like diabetes or strokes or other conditions. I'm sure at your age you're thinking, what am I, why do I care about those things? But you probably have family members who have some of these conditions. So learning about them and being able to help your family could be something that you really could contribute to your family.
Okay, what we're going to do, and this is going to give you some sense of of uh, what you can do in Second Life. We're going to walk through these these posters. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I just got, I, I, we've, we're fully vaccinated. You can walk right through the posters. Follow me. This is the Health Hacienda. Through the back of it. Okay, so you want to try the treadmills? You can try the treadmills if you'd like. Yeah, just cl click on them and you'll, you should each get a chance to try them. Now the question is if you watch your, if you're watching your, oh here and here's another place, another thing to do. You can click on the dance balls here. This is a group dance. Everybody try dancing. Just click on one of the balls. <laughs> yes, you can. You just click on stand and you'll be, and at the bottom of your screen you'll get right off these things. Click on stand. Yeah, everybody can dance together. Just click on one of the balls and you'll dance the same dance together. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We need to so do we have music here. Usually we can turn the music on. Look at us. Oh. We're so accomplished. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so, I'm sure you all know how important exercise is to well being. So, I'm going to show you. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> This is, group dancing is the most fun. No offense to you. That's right. That's right. All right. So we're going to walk, we're going to walk through, just, just click stand now, please. So we're going to walk, I want to show you the uh, exercise areas. We call it exercise east and west. Let's go through here. Yeah, we have, we, have, we have yoga mats. You know the importance of exercise for well-being for the brain, particularly. So we've got these yoga mats. We've got, I'll show you the Tai Chi. We've got Qi Gong. And we've got, if you use those, yep. If you use your, <laughs> you're doing the jumping jacks, sit-ups, yep. Now, if you're home and watching your avatar and you're doing it with your avatar, that's pretty good, right? Kind of get you going. Yeah. And the and the uh, yoga mats are very good because they actually follow a real yoga sequences. So if you follow, watch your avatar. Did we get everybody in here? Are they all over here at this point? Um, more or less, I think. Yeah, we're lo I'm sure we're losing people. Yeah, and let me t take you over to the Tai Chi because this is another group thing that's really interesting. When you do the Tai Chi together, it's it's quite mesmerizing. I practice Tai Chi in real life, so this okay, try to come here and I've never managed it yet, so let's see. Be right on right. Just... left click. If you have an uh, animation overrider, take off and slowly take off any animations overrider you have. Yeah, and everybody can get on it. I think there are a lot of them here.
behind the air. This is the it's called the Center for Well-Being over here. This building. It looks like a sort of a Moorish place. If you walk over to the back of it with me, I'm just going to take, going to take you around. We're almost. You have to go under the tree. These are the are Qigong mats. Glad to see it happens to somebody else in the movie. <laughs> and here, just to look around, okay, we have horses on every level. You can ride ride horses. In it, I think I'm probably way behind in what I'm doing here. Okay, and I no I'm and then we're going to walk over to our new student cafe. Thank you for coming. It's interesting though that, that people um, stay with the community. When people found a, a good, um, positive community in Second Life, they, they tend to stay. They, they tend do. to make friends. Um, it's, it's as strong as any community in, in real life. In fact, it's, we shouldn't even separate them out. As, as Jen Helen said, this is real life. Yeah, it is an aspect of your life. And what you do here is is important for you with other people is what you do in your in your life and you can learn a lot about socializing with people here actually people who have difficulty sometimes in life in their outside life find they learn how to interact with people better here and then they take that outside as well which i think is wonderful